The Kashmiri people have been denied their inalienable right. Today, I ask the world if a country can be allowed to renege on its solemn commitments to the United Nations, break its own promises, and blatantly violate international law just because they want to. I must emphasize here that the commitments under the UN Security Council resolutions are sacrosanct. They are neither servile to the whims of a jingoistic political party, nor diluted by the passage of time. India's continued denial of the rights of the Kashmiri people is a wrongful, illegal act. No amount of diplomatic duplicity or Indian state-perpetrated terror can change this fact. India will have to fulfill its obligations to the Security Council by granting the Kashmiri people their lawful right to self-determination. Mr. Speaker, Today, an occupied Kashmir has become an open prison, a prison where Kashmiri Muslims are forced to breathe fear, thousands of them killed, disappeared, or blinded, their lands grabbed, their properties confiscated or bulldozed, their culture disintegrated, their media muzzled, the occupying Indian forces run rampant with arbitrary detentions, torture, extrajudicial killings of Kashmiri Muslims. This mayhem continues under draconian laws allowing complete impunity for the Indian occupying forces. This wretched, perpetual and systemic Indian barbarism not just violates international law, it makes a mockery of the accepted norms of fundamental human rights. I ask those who champion the rules-based international order and place a premium on protecting and promoting human rights, how can they turn, an, turn a blind eye to this savagery? It is indeed not wise to sacrifice these timeless principles for short-term interests. One cannot wax lyrical about international law and the United Nations Security Council resolutions in Europe in the European context and then turn a blind eye to the violation of the same international law in the Kashmiri context. Mr. Speaker, India's unilateral and illegal actions of August 5, 2019 opened a new chapter of oppression. India's ultimate aim is to convert Kashmiris into a dispossessed and disempowered minority in their own land. The fresh delimitations, domicile certificates to millions of outsiders, and addition of millions of temporary residents to the voters' lists are part of a well-thought-out strategy to change Kashmir's demography and its political landscape. Pakistan outrightly rejects these unilateral and illegal steps. How can the world... How can the world be a silent bystander when a large country usurps the rights guaranteed by the Security Council and instead use brute force to suppress those rights? Isn't it the same world that is upholding these principles elsewhere while remaining completely oblivious to them in Kashmir? Mr. Speaker, as we speak, India is hosting the meeting of, the, of a tourism working group in Sirinagar. Meetings of a consultative forum on youth affairs, Y20, has already been held in Jammu, Leh and Sirinagar in the past few weeks. This is yet another display of India's arrogance on the world stage. Indian occupation of a territory that is recognized as disputed under international law. India is misusing its position as chair of the G20, a forum created to address global financial and economic issues with utter disregard for the Security Council resolution, the UN Charter and its principle. India's facade of normalcy in Kashmir is met by the harsh reality that occupied Kashmir remains one of the most militarized zones on the planet. Mr. Speaker, normal areas are not under siege by millions of troops. 
normal areas are not operated, um, operated under so-called governor's rule. Normal areas do not have unidentified graves and half windows. In normal areas, people are allowed to travel abo abroad and journalists are free to report. How can India possibly claim that normalcy has returned to Kashmir? I wish to remind the Indian leaders that unilateral steps in Jammu and Kashmir can neither record legitimacy to their occupation nor suppress the true sentiments of the Kashmiri people. Gimmickry cannot replace legitimacy. If India wants to be a superpower, Mr. Speaker, then India must start acting like a superpower. The United Nations Special Rapporteur on Minority Affairs speaks clearly on the Sirinagar meeting that India is providing, that Indi and claims that India is providing, quote, a veneer of support to a facade of normalcy. Ye mere alfaz nahi hai, janabi speaker. Ye United Nations ki jo special repertoire hai, a clear affairs ke liye. Ye unka alfaz hai. Pointing out the blatant human rights violations in occupied Kashmir, he has drawn an apt conclusion that the situation in Jammu and Kashmir should be, quote, decried and condemned, not pushed under the rug and ignored. Mr. Speaker, I remind the world that there are two reports on the situation in occupied Kashmir by the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights issued in 2018 and 2019. Those of us who are interested in upholding human rights are morally bound to pay attention to these reports. Mr. Speaker, the, world, the word Pakistan is incomplete without Kashmir. The people of Pakistan and the people of Kashmir have a unique affinity based on geographical proximity, shared history, commonality of religion, we have shared joys, shared sorrows, we share the same hopes, the same, the same dreams, our hearts beat as one. Pakistan cannot ignore what happens in Jammu and Kashmir. It is a party to the dispute. For us, it is not a matter of choice. We are duty bound to play our role in the just and peaceful resolution of the Jammu and Kashmir dispute in accordance with the UN Security Council resolutions and the wishes of the people of Kashmir. Mr. Speaker, my presence here today is a testimony of our nation's international, intergen not international, intergenerational support and lasting commitment to the Kashmir cause. We want good relations with our neighbors, including India, However, good relations can only be achieved through dispute resolution and not through dispute denialism. Durable peace in South Asia remains contingent upon the settlement of the Jammu and Kashmir dispute. Despite our consistent advocacy for constructive engagement and result oriented dialogue to resolve all outstanding issues, including the core issue of Jammu and Kashmir, India unabatedly remains hostile. Its regressive actions have in fact further vitiated the environment and the onus therefore remains on India to take the necessary steps to create an enabling environment conducive for a meaningful and result oriented dialogue. During my recent visit to Goa to attend the security, uh, the SCO meeting, I repeatedly said that India would have to revert to the situation on the 4th of August 2019 to work out a way forward. Mr. Speaker, India has, India has also been trying to use the terrorism bogeyman to mask the indigenous Kashmiri struggle for their legitimate rights to self-determination. It uses the same bogey to blame Pakistan and justify its brutal repression of the Kashmiri people. This is a complete travesty of justice. There is a clear distinction between terrorism and a people's genuine quest for freedom. Terrorism cannot be and should not be used as an excuse to deny the Kashmiri people their fundamental rights and their fundamental freedoms. Mr. Speaker, I also want to emphasize that the belligerent, 
Indian statements about Azad Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan should be raising alarm bells across the world. These are not isolated statements. They epitomize a political party that nurtures and hones fascist majoritarianism and religious jingoism. If a billion people are economically and politically incentivized into hate mongering, the results can be disastrous. We could be sleepwalking towards South Asia's Armageddon. Notwithstanding India's military and political rhetoric, Pakistan has exercised maximum restraint. Pakistan does not want another conflict. However, it has the will and capacity to respond forcefully and effectively and defend, its res defend resolutely against any, any act of aggression. Janabe speaker, jitna chai peena chate hain, hum unko pula sakte hain. Hum apna watan dafa karna chante hain. Janabe speaker, justice delayed is justice denied. I appeal to all men and women of conscience across the world to urge the occupying forces of India to one, rescind its unilateral and illegal actions of the 5th of August 2019 and the subsequent steps, to implement fully the relevant UN Security Council resolutions and allow the Kashmiri people to freely exercise their right to self-determination through a UN supervised plebiscite. Three, to provide solemn assurances that it will not change the occupied territory's demographic composition and not allow Kashmiri, non-Kashmiris to acquire property or residency in Jammu and Kashmir. Four, to halt its human rights violations in occupied Jammu and Kashmir, five, to repeal its draconian emergency laws, withdraw its heavy military presence from Kashmiri cities, towns, and villages, and six, to provide unhindered access to UN, OHCHR, OIC, and human rights organizations and international media to investigate, report on the situation in occupied Kashmir. Mr. Speaker, I salute the courage of the Kashmiri people and I pay tribute, rich tribute, to the martyrs. I offer my sincere sympathies to the population living close to the line of control we have, who have suffered enormously. I assure the Kashmiri people of Pakistan's unstinted moral, diplomatic and political support. We have stood by them for decades and I assure you that we will stand for as long as it takes our Kashmiri brethren to achieve their legitimate rights. We wish to see a day where people across the line of control enjoy the same rights and freedoms as are being enjoyed by the rest of the world. I thank you for affording me this opportunity to speak. May peace be with you. Thank you. Aap sabka bohat, bohat shukri. बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया जनाब लावर बटो जरदारी साहब मैं सदर आजाद जम्मू व कश्मीर आजाद जम्मू व कश्मीर कानून साज